Welcome to Let Love, a podcast with the Sisters of Life. We invite you to join us for conversation, looking at life through the lens of love. You are loved, you are made in God's image, and your life matters. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to Let Love Podcast. This is Sister Annie's Day. And this is Sister Veritas. And it's a joy to be back. Yeah. And this is, uh, we're going to end uh, season three here. I can't believe it. It has flown by. It has totally it's flown. Amazing. It really has. And uh, so. today we're going to talk about Let Love Find You. Cool. Yeah. I love it. It's a good good way to end end the season. Yeah. When so much has happened in life, you know? So much has happened. Actually, a lot's happened for me, sister. Really? T- tell me. <laughs> well, I do. I might have to empty the bucket a little bit before yeah. we get started because... I I can't even believe what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> what what happened? <laughs> <laughs> no, and and it's the we're going back to the squirrels. Oh, this, yep. And okay. actually, I I do for the record, I am what I'm about to say is a hundred percent true. I believe you. Yep, you can talk to I, my car mechanic. <laughs> it's a hundred percent true. I can show you the fuel line, because sister, these squirrels, actually tucked up into the hood of our car, and chewed through the fuel line what and like literally we went to start the car and like (laughs) gallons of gasoline came shooting out of the bottom of the vehicle i mean this is a (laughs) absolutely true story i believe you yeah and literally okay we're like what the heck happened and so we finally got to the shop and they're like um first they're like if we think someone cut your fuel line we're like oh gosh that's that would be a bad situation bad sign but they're like oh wait a second as they looked (laughs) further Beneath the hood of the car, two Nutella snack packs oh, gosh. emptied out. I'm not even joking. This is like a storybook. It's a storybook. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it, you wouldn't, but it's true. These are Bronx squirrels. Then the car mechanic found like trash, <laughs> even more trash in the hood of the car. And like, I think this squirrel mistook the fuel line because if you look at it, it is a little bendy right, and like, right, right. thick yeah, yeah. for a tree branch. Right. He was nesting, right. settling in. Nesting. Either I, that, the squirrel is either exceptionally dumb. Which, hey, is possible. Very possible. We know this. Or it's malicious. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only two possible options. The, uh, honestly, this situation is absolutely black and white. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I, there's no other qualification. And I have. I had to take this to prayer because I'm like, I'm like, Lord, why? <laughs> right, right. Why would, why? Right. It, but why? That's an expensive snack. It's a very expensive <laughs> snack. It's a, it's a... Yeah. And, it, yeah. And I mean, anyway. And they're fat enough, let's be honest. Okay. Someone's got to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> they really are. They're taking the, like, the... <laughs> they're taking it serious this year. Yeah. This super winter. serious. Must be a hard winter. We've got a big one ahead, I think. <laughs> We've got a big winter. But, like, literally, sister... And this is one of these moments where I I know, and thank you for listening to me. Oh, I'm, it's an honor. Yeah. No, it's kind of you because I think it's one of those moments in life, and I think these moments can come um, fairly frequently, that you're just confronted with a mystery. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I don't know why. I don't quite understand. I don't necessarily yet see right. how God, how this could be for me. <laughs> right. Um I have not lost faith. I trust. I'm so, I trust I'm, in the Lord. Praise God. I'm glad to hear that. And I am. I, I'm kind of stepping back. I'm saying, you know what? Like, I'm just going to let it be a mystery. Right. And you know what? In God's good time, he'll pull the veil back. But for now, <laughs> I'm not going to let it steal my peace. Okay. And uh, yeah, a, a squirrel literally chewed through our fuel line. And, <laughs> <laughs> and our car had to be towed. Our car had to be towed out of a small space. <laughs> With gallons of gasoline spilling all over the right. the driveway. Yeah, it was an event. <laughs> Grateful everyone's safe. And yeah, I think, I, and I do think there is a level of truth in saying, you know what, this guy, this squirrel is either totally malicious, right, if that's a possible thing, or it's exceptionally dumb, which I actually <laughs> think is very possible. So anyway, this is why I am grateful that I have the gospel to lean up against. Yes. Like when life is a mystery and you're confronted and befuddled with yes. mystery, you can go to the word and lean up against a rock. Sister, amen. I'm I, done. I love that. And actually what you're describing right now makes me think of, you know, it's like when we, we feel a little lost in what's happening. Why? How? It makes me think of the, the parables in Luke. 
the uh, lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son. The triplet. The triplet. It's a power play. They're amazing. Grand slam. It's amazing. And I think it corresponds beautifully to Let Love Find You. Yeah. I think it's fabulous. That literally love is about us. It's seeking us all the time. And uh, wherever we might be standing in life, whatever we might be facing, uh, whatever might be befuddling us. Right. Love is seeking me. Amen. And resting in that truth is uh, is a gift, and it's there for me to a- claim. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Should we kick it off with a prayer, That'd sister? That would be awesome. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your love, your goodness, your kindness. Lord, thank you for always seeking us, for finding us. Lord Jesus, we pray for the grace to let ourselves be found. We entrust ourselves to you and all those uh, whom we love, we entrust to you. And we ask for the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary as we pray, Hail Mary, full of of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and And blessed blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, our Mother, pray for us. us. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Whoa, let love find you. Yeah. I want to break open these these Gospels. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Well, where should we begin? Should we start with the lost sheep? Yeah. Would you like to read that? Because your name means Sister Agnuste, the Lamb, <laughs> yeah. the Lamb of God. I'm totally into it, Sister. What an honor. But yeah, let's um, let's just uh, speak. Let's just dive into the Word of God here. Yeah. And um, pray for the grace to just uh, let it open our hearts. Um, let it be the sword that it is. And uh, let new life and love into into that space. Mm-hmm. So here we go. The parable of the lost sheep. Here it is. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, He lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Amen. Yeah, that's the word of the Lord. Amen. That's awesome. What do you think, sister? Hey, I, that resonates so deeply with me because it's like, I mean, let's be honest. I think there's all times in life where we feel lost, mm-hmm. you know, either lost in our circumstances, lost in our emotions, lost in our thoughts, in our heads, mm-hmm. trying to make sense of things, mm-hmm. um, lost um, in the sense of being, feeling alone, you know? And, and in unfamiliar territory, whether that be, you know, physically or in our hearts, you know? And it's like, sometimes we can put up barriers and walls and try to, like, do it on our own. But at the end of the day, it's like, what do I want? I want someone to come find me. Hmm. You know, I want to I be found. Totally. Um, you know, I, I remember talking to this girl recently, and, and she was saying, sister, she was in college, she's saying, sister, she's like, we all feel so lost right now. You know, we don't know where we're supposed to go, what we're supposed to do, who we are, what we're supposed to be. And I think that's, yeah, I just think it, it's, um, this gospel speaks so powerfully into that. And I think that experience is very real, mm-hmm. right? Where, who am I, where am I going? Mm-hmm. Um, and we can all be confronted with those deep questions. Mm-hmm. How reassuring. It's so powerful. This is speaking to the reality of a God who goes after mm-hmm. the one who is lost. Uh, and when he finds it, whatever it is, and in this case, God looking for you, for me, he places us on his shoulders. So his, his intent isn't just to find us. It's to then carry us. Mm-hmm. And not even that, he's rejoicing. Yeah. That you and me, as we allow ourselves to be gathered up, mm-hmm. found, uh, it 
brings so much delight mm-hmm. to the heart of the Father. Mm-hmm. So much delight. A sister, I think that's so important. It's so important to remember. Yeah. Well, even in this, not only that, but then he gathers his friends and his neighbors. <laughs> and he says, rejoice with me. Wow. Rejoice with me. Like, think about when would... When would you do that? It's like when you have found something that's precious to you, Mm -hmm. that you love dearly, Mm -hmm. that's when you call everybody in and you're like, check this out. Yeah. Yeah. The joy of my life. Yeah. Come and bear witness to the joy of my life. Yeah. This is basically what the Father's heart is like. Yeah. Well, even as you say that, sister, when does that happen in in real life? Weddings. Hmm. Births of babies. Come and rejoice with me. Wow. It's like, wow. Wow. Like, this is the best thing that could have ever happened, ever. Wow. Wow. Um, that's awesome. And I think it's so powerful to say that because I think so often we can have this image of God, like when, when we get lost and sometimes it's not our fault and sometimes it is, you know? And I think we think, gosh, like when God finds me, he's going to be so mad at me. He's going to punish me. I'm in the bad books. I'm on the naughty list. Mm -hmm, Right. mm -hmm. And, um, that's not how God works because he sees you. He knows you. He loves you. And, and you're, you're the treasure of his heart. And so this is like, to be honest, I bet this, I mean, it still does kind of totally boggles the mind mm-hmm. because it's, it's sort of opposite of what most people would do. It's like, you know, 99 sheep, one gun, cut your losses, you know, but no, no that's no. not how God is. No, he literally, he goes after the sheep until he finds it. Mm-hmm. So it's, and that's what scripture tells us. He goes after the one which is lost until he finds it. Mm-hmm. Basically with the Lord, um, he's going to be relentless, mm-hmm. non-abandonment, seeking you always in all places at all times. Mm-hmm. He's the hound of heaven. Mm. And, and in a sense, it's like, even if we should be, um, sinful, um, ch- check this out. It covers it in this gospel. There's more joy in heaven over one yeah. who simply repents, right. turns back. And what does it mean to repent? Just to turn around, mm-hmm. just to turn around and look up, turn, mm-hmm. turn back from what you've been pursuing mm-hmm. and let yourself be found by his love. Yeah. It's literally that easy. Simple. It's true. It, it, it actually makes me think of this experience I had as a child. I might've been like four or so. Mm-hmm. And I was in the mall with my, my parents and it was a really busy. It kind of got a little distracted. Then so I started, and then but I saw mom, and so I start, followed her and kind of wondered why she was walking so quickly and followed her. And at a certain point, she turned around, and it wasn't mom. And it was like, <gasps> oh dear, it was not mom. And it was that moment I felt I was like, oh my gosh, my entire frame of reference is gone. That's mm. not mom. And then within seconds, you know, mom came up behind me, and it was like. <gasps> deep side she was she was mm-hmm. with me she was behind me the whole time she was you know finding me the whole time mm. um but it's it's yeah like letting letting ourselves be found and letting ourselves um let our letting our frame of reference be love be How god's beautiful. love um that he finds us in that it's powerful yeah. sister well even the reality that letting that frame um letting our framework be love and just tuning in briefly here, because I know we've got a lot of gospel yet to to move through, but I remember hearing in a homily a priest speak about shepherds, and that shepherds, when a sheep has strayed, one, they find the sheep, uh, that the reason they carry the sheep on their shoulders mm-hmm. is because they actually break the legs. Of the sheep. Of the sheep. Oh my! Um, when, he, when he finds the stray sheep, and then he places them on his shoulders, so that this sheep can learn to trust. Wow. So this sheep can learn the voice of the shepherd. Wow. So this sheep can literally rest near the heart of this good shepherd and learn his love, his tenderness, mm. his care, mm. and that that sheep then will never stray. Wow. And I think this is the love that's seeking us. Wow. Um, even as we are, we may be stuck in our sins or wherever we are, or just in crazy pastures, um, mm-hmm. and we've lost our way. Not only do we have a God that is seeking us with love, but that even in our wayward paths, mm-hmm. He's going to be bringing us back and even closer to Himself, That's so into amazing. a deeper knowledge of Himself. That He will be using all of that mm-hmm. to actually reveal Himself 
and reveal love more deeply and fully to us. Wow. This is the God that we have. That's so powerful. Amen. And that he's even, the breaking of the legs, he's wounding in order to heal. Yeah. So even he, he let our gas line be broken in order to, in order to heal something. I mean, I'm going to, I'm, I'm on, I'm going to keep a lookout. I haven't, <laughs> I'm going to be real. I don't, I haven't felt the grace yet on it, <laughs> but I have been given the grace to live it peaceably. Yes. I've noticed that. You've yeah. been very right? peaceful. I've been proud of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, sister, what about, um, I mean, again, and these, the scripture is so rich, oh my but gosh. then he's, it's a triplet. It's the parable of the last coin yeah. right after this. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, I'll read it. It's really, it's, I mean, it's a shorter one, but, um, he says, or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me for I have found the coin, which I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Kapow. Kapow. That's not in the scriptures, but I added that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the heart effect. Yeah, yeah. And it is Whoa. powerful, sister. I love this. What do we hear? Mm-hmm. We hear if something is lost, a light is lit, the house is swept, um, there's a diligent seeking. Until what? Mm-hmm. Until it's found. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, whoa. Yeah, he will not stop. Love will not. He never stops seeking us, ever. We, it's we who stop seeking him, mm-hmm. but he never stops mm-hmm. seeking us. Mm-hmm. And I, I love this, too, because it's kind of, I'm thinking of, like, you know, coins. Like, um, like I think of pennies. It's like this woman, was, I, I really don't think she was seeking pennies, right? These coins, ten coins of, of inc- incredible value. Right. And so one of them is, is deeply dear to her, deeply mm-hmm. valuable. Um, mm-hmm. It's not something you could just, you know, cut your losses. Um, she will find it. Um, and I think that's important for us to remember, like each of us is so dear and valuable to the heart of God. So we, we will never cease to be important to mm-hmm. the heart of God ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's not going to cut his losses. Mm-hmm. He will fight tooth and nail for us. Just like I re- you mentioned another squirrel story today. Oh gosh, I know. I I feel like I I don't know. I, I don't want to believe in squirrel conspiracy against me, but sometimes it's hard not to. <laughs> Which one did I mention? Well, I think you mentioned the the headline that you read. Uh, oh yes. Well, here yes. Uh, again, forgive the squirrel in this in this gospel expose. But I was trying to look up some products to um, deter squirrels peppermint spray, these kind of things that you can use on your vehicle. But what popped up is um, a story recent in the news. Apparently in Idaho, a man has a pet squirrel. Yeah. Wow. That was, I, I, I like, couldn't help myself. I checked into the article. It's like my dream. <laughs> pet right? squirrel. Right? Well, he had a pet squirrel and, you know, things worked for him. I guess he was out of the house and someone came and tried to um, steal some things out of his house. But this squirrel attacked the burglar. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> and they were they were able to confirm, not only because this burglar got a few things and then ran off because the squirrel wouldn't leave him alone. Uh, but they were able to confirm he was a burglar because he had scratch and bite marks all over <laughs> him from the squirrel. Oh so, boy. Poor again, guy. you can look up the story, but... Yeah, it's pretty strong defense from a squirrel. Yeah, and what a small... I mean, it's just a little example of, like, you know, defending the one he loves, his owner. <laughs> but, I mean, that's just, like, a pitiful example compared to, like, the love God has for us. And, like, he f- he, he fights for us. He, he fights for us. And, and he'll find us. He'll find us like the Hound of Heaven. Mm-hmm. Have you heard that poem, I love, sister? I love the Hound of Heaven. Francis Thompson wrote it, The Hound of Heaven. And it's powerful. I fled him down the nights and down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I fled him down the labyrinth ways of my own mind in the midst of tears. I hid from him, and under running laughter, up vistaed hopes I sped and shot, precipitated, adown titanic glooms of chasmed fears, from those strong feet that followed, followed after. I mean, it keeps... Going, wow. wow! But it speaks of this hound of heaven seeking yeah. him at every turn, and it was a reflection on his own life. That's right. That's right. Because he, I think, you might have to help me. He tried to be a priest and failed at that. He tried to 
be a doctor failed at that. He ended up being, I think, like a drug addict and homeless. I think he did fall into addictions. Yeah, fall into addictions um, and homeless and outside. And it was like this experience of of feeling a life of, of failure, but then seeing it all, actually, um, the Lord was pursuing him, pursuing mm-hmm. his heart. And the Lord never considered him uh, a failure. And, and all, all God wanted to do was draw him to himself. Isn't that unbelievable? Mm-hmm. It is. Here he says... Ah, fondest, blindest, weakest, I am he whom thou seekest. Isn't this outrageous? That's so good. He, he sought him. Rise, clasp my hand, and come. I mean, wow. it's save me, save only me. It's an incredible, incredible poem mm-hmm. that I encourage anyone to read. Hearkening to these gospels, mm-hmm. you know, the parable of the lost sheep. The parable of the lost coin. Um, And here we are, the parable of the prodigal son and his brother. Mm -hmm. Uh, That epic. Mm. uh, I think if someone prayed with that their whole lifetime, they would not be wanting Mm -mm. um, Mm -mm. for knowledge of God and for knowledge of of how precious we are to the heart of God. Um, I don't know, sister. You want to unpack this one? Yeah, let's Read excerpts. I know it's a long one, so it may be... Um, well, we'll just do a little summary. Yeah. That sounds great. So, I mean, I'm sure most of us know the story, but, you know, the man who had two sons, one says to the father, basically, the equivalent of father, I wish you were dead. Give me my share of the inheritance. Mm-hmm. Uh, he takes it. He leaves home, you know, goes and spends it all on terrible living, you know. Life of dissipation. Right. That's how you would say it. Yeah. Dissipation. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's, you know, totally becomes... Uh, impoverished and you know hires himself out to the this uh farmer to feed the swine which for a a jew is like the Mm -hmm. lowest of the low Mm -hmm. um and then i love this line it says but when he came to himself he said Mm -hmm. how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare but i perish here with hunger i will arise and go to my father and say to him father i've sinned against heaven and before you you know and then he, he goes back home and his father so he's not even home yet. This is what I love. He's not even home yet. Mm. Um, and it says, but while he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. Wow. Yeah. And and the son does the rehearsed speech and the father doesn't let him even finish. He says, you know, bring the best robe, put it on and put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet, bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and make merry because this is the best. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Wow. I mean, what? Wow. That is the heart of a father. Yeah. Um, yeah. With unabated love yeah. for his son. Yeah. And that life is to be living in that covenant mm-hmm. with the father. Mm-hmm. Um, that's life. Mm-hmm. That's the definition of life. Mm-hmm. And I think that's true for us too. Mm-hmm. That to the degree that we're able to receive and live in communion with the Father, live in this incredible covenant, this bond of love that's been established between the Father's heart and ours, Mm -hmm. and into the gift of our baptism, that's life. Yeah. That is life. Yeah. And here, this son, uh, he he realized all the treasures of the earth are empty. Mm Mm-hmm. They actually... That's a great line. Oh. Yeah. Well, right? Yeah. And here he is. He returns to himself. Yeah. He, He... claims once more his great dignity which is being a son of the father yeah and claiming his uh, true deeper yeah. eternal inheritance it's amazing and, and you know what's beautiful to me is the father is so meek and so mm-hmm. gracious and he, he gives him the inheritance um it's like he he references his freedom mm-hmm. um, i'm sure at a pain to his own heart you know watching mm-hmm. his son go off uh, but it's like it's like God, he proposes, but he never imposes, right? Mm-hmm. He never forces his love on us. But it's always seeking us, always waiting for us. And and what is like the, the moment where he just, the son literally, it's like turns his head to come back. And the father's been just waiting for that moment, you know, and, and has been seeking him the whole time, the whole time. And, and runs to meet him. Wow. It's like, you just, I mean, it really can make me cry, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And there's no, there's no reprimand. There's no, you know, little punishment. You sit in the corner, you've been gone for five years. 
like none of that mm-hmm. let's have a party yeah let's have a party and celebrate yeah and yet true true they were able to celebrate because the son had truly repented mm-hmm. he had turned back mm-hmm. and i think it's in that turning back that he can receive mm-hmm. that the gift of celebration yeah he could receive the new life his father wanted to bestow on him yeah and it's it's amazing too because even like the sliver of turning back at the beginning and then the father's light and love like mm-hmm. flooded him and it's like that i mean that would convict the heart completely of mm-hmm. of you know repentance and and full uh turning and it's um it's striking to me too the the older brother you know who puts up a big stink you know why you're giving him a party i've mm. been so good to you and giving me anything mm. um but it's like the the older brother hadn't let himself be found either by the father mm. um he'd been there the whole time but he hadn't let himself be be held by the father's love to step into that enter into that covenant yeah well i love that um because he went out and uh, included in this gospel is a a beautiful conversation uh, in that he said to his son because his son was upset this Mm -hmm. was confusing to him and again i can understand that it's like yeah how we can react to god's mercy um, in people's lives it's like whoa what like seriously right um god's gift of love which is totally unbridled Mm -hmm. totally reckless Mm -hmm. um and this, so he's struggling. He's on the struggle bus. But what does he say <laughs> to him? Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. And he said it was fitting to make Mary and be glad. For this, your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Again, we see the father reorienting, as, as he does all of our hearts throughout mm-hmm. our lives, to the true treasure. Mm-hmm. The treasures of heaven, mm-hmm. our true inheritance, mm-hmm. which is eternal communion with God, mm-hmm. um, the the treasure that we can claim each and every day. What does He say? All that's mine is yours. Mm-hmm. We can live there now. Yeah. We can live receiving the Father's love in and through all the events of our lives. Yeah. Whether it's the weird squirrels that <laughs> chew through our fuel lines, right? Right. right. Whether it's the joys. Uh, whether it's uh, being totally befuddled um, mm-hmm. as you are confronted with the circumstances of your life, bewildered even, yeah, um, and yet looking up. Mm-hmm. I mean, allowing that turning of our hearts again and again mm-hmm. and again to the face of the loving Father. Uh, the Father who is on point, he's waiting for us to crest mm-hmm. that horizon, mm-hmm. waiting to gather us if, if we would but open our arms. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a radical love. It is. It's so rich. Mm. It's so rich. Yeah. I love that. Wow, sister, before we go, what do you think? Well, before we go, I think, um, I think to, to come, you know, come before Jesus and just be with him and reflect, you know, where in my life do I feel lost? Um, where am I lost? And to be honest, because I think oftentimes we can be lost in a number of places, but we mm-hmm. won't admit it. Mm-hmm. We still keep trying to find our own way, figure it out, you know, take, try this path, that path. And it, it's all fruitless. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know what? Jesus, show me, help me to admit where I'm lost right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that could be, to be honest, it could be a hundred times a day, little things. It could be a big thing, whatever it is, whatever situation or relationship or circumstance. Yeah, just ask for the grace to, to admit it. Um, and then ask for the grace to be found. Mm. Jesus, find me here. Yeah. And kind of surrender the need to, to figure it out or do it. Let him do it. Amen. Yeah, that's what I would say. That's awesome, sister. Yeah. yeah. Wow. What about you before we go? Well, I think it's probably similar, probably an echo of yours. But I would say particularly those places where you feel bewildered, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, kind of caught in the mystery of life and allowing God to find you there. Uh, and in this way, not insisting that he give you the answer you think you need, Mm. but in letting him, uh, be present to you in the way that he desires to be. Wow. That was really powerful. It's, it's a lot of times it's the, it's the breakthrough moment. It's Mm -hmm. the gate that we need. Um, and that's this posture of, of filial receptivity Mm -hmm. of just a son or a daughter saying, you know, father, Mm -hmm. I trust you. Mm -hmm. 
and I really want the gift you want to give. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so there's a little dare. Wow, I love that, sister. I love that. Wow. Amen. Amen. Well, um, would you close us in a prayer? I'd love to. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We thank you for your love. We ask that uh, we simply open our hearts wide open to the love of your Son, Jesus, and wide open to receiving your gaze of love upon us. We ask for every grace of faith to reach out, to look up, to open wide our hearts in faith to your love, Father. We entrust all of our cares and worries and concerns And we just thank you ahead of time for being with us, for sending your son uh, to anoint and to bless us in the places that we most need to be found by your love. We ask all this as we say glory be to the Father, to the the Son, and to to the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. We can't wait to be back for season four. Wow. In December sometime. Yeah, December 21st. Sounds awesome. Sounds great. I'll meet you right here. Sounds great. (laughs) God bless you. We're praying for you all. And yeah, be assured of that um, in these days that we are carrying you in our hearts Mm -hmm. and uh, tucking you into the tabernacle. Um, May you know the Lord's blessings. Amen. This was Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life, a religious community of women consecrated for the protection of the sacredness of human life. Be assured of our prayers and learn more at sistersoflife.org.